Thursday morning. Hey, just a reminder again, this will be our last um, Sunday um, online where everything is still streaming online. And, um, you know, Donald and the team have done a great job of bringing that to you and bringing it to you in high quality. So when we come back together, um, don't miss giving, taking the opportunity to say thanks for um, Donald and his team's sacrifice to bring you just a quality production every Sunday. And a reminder again, you know, this Sunday what we be, what we will be talking about is um, biblical womanhood. Um, remember last Sunday we talked about um, biblical manhood and um, um, what's job what's God's job description for a man. Now we're going to be looking at what's God's job description for a woman. Here's our quarantine motivated tweet. 50% of parenting is trying to decide if the noise is worth walking up all those stairs. 50% of parenting is trying to decide if the noise is worth walking up all those stairs to find out what is going on. Question of the day. If you wrote a book, what would it be about? If you wrote a book, what would it be about? They say that everybody has at least one book in them. What would your book be about? Take some time to discuss. We've been looking at lessons from the life of Joseph. Yesterday, Jacob blessed Joseph's household. Joseph's sons were Manasseh. He was the oldest. Ephraim was the youngest. Yet, Jacob blessed Ephraim with his right hand of favor and Manasseh with his left hand. Well... God quite often breaks from protocol and uses the person that men us underestimate. You know, a lot of times men underestimate who God will use. And that's true throughout the scriptures. Joseph himself was surprised by Jacob's choice, even though Joseph himself was God's surprise choice of all the brothers. Take some time to read Genesis chapter 49, verses 1 through 33. Take some time to do that now. When you read that, what's he talking about? Why, why is he going through this? Jacob, before he passes away, has gathered his sons. God gives Jacob insight from Jacob's own observation combined with God's foreknowledge to prophesy over this family. And what these brothers don't realize to its full extent is that their descendants will one day make up the 12 tribes of Israel and they'll make up how the nation of Israel is divided up, how that physical land of Canaan will be divided up. And here's the thing, what prophecy does is it confirms that even through human strengths, human weaknesses, through um, mankind's shortcomings, God is the one who orchestrates his story. That's what prophecy proves. You had Reuben. He's going from oldest to youngest. You had Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Zebulun, Issachar, Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali. Then under Joseph's umbrella, you had Ephraim and Manasseh, then Benjamin. And you go, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. You count those. That's not 12 tribes. That's 13. Well, there's 12 physical tribes because Levi would be the priests. They wouldn't have land holdings. Well, but you still have 13 tribes. Well, there's still a way we can get to 12 because Joseph, his tribe is divided into two between Ephraim and Manasseh. So there's still always a way that you can get to 12. God isn't lying to us when he says he got the divided the land into 12 tribes. He blessed each son with a blessing appropriate to him. Now, here's a distinction. There's a difference between grace and blessing. Grace overflows to all, and it is all undeserved. Now, blessing overflows to each individual, but is regulated based upon God's wisdom. Now, last week, 
Jeff talked about Ephesians chapter 1. God has portioned all spiritually blessing to us equally, but God has blessed each of us in different ways by giving us different opportunities and different roles. So Jacob has one last request. When this is all over, he says, when I pass away, I want you to bury me with Abraham, um, with Isaac, where they are buried. This is very important. We're establishing this chosen nation, nation of Israel. Now, why did they get favored nation status? Well, they're chosen people of God. Why? Why did Israel get this favored nation status? Well, it wasn't because of their superiority. It doesn't speak of the greatness of Israel. What it does is it shows God can take normal people and still change the world through them when they are willingly being used and even when they are unwillingly being used. And that is the nature of followers of God. Sometimes we are willingly being used, but then other times we are unwillingly being used. And here's the deal. We get to share in what God is doing when we willingly participate. We don't get to share in it when we unwillingly participate. But either way, God wins with you or without you. So what's the application? <laughs> Join in. Willingly participate with his kingdom agenda. He's going to win whether you get on board or not. He's not dependent on you, but your story is dependent on him. And that's what prophecy shows us. So, question on the table, are you going to join in? Are you going to willingly um, join in his kingdom story? And what a privilege to, to do that. Are we going to associate ourselves with the winner? Or are we going to buck God's system? And we will surely lose. And God will have his way, regardless. So join in his story. Stop fighting the will of God. We'll see you tomorrow as we conclude our time and lessons from the life of Joseph.